What is going on guys, Victor here, and today's video is probably one of my favorites I've ever done. It was the most incredible day of pompano fishing I've ever witnessed. Now you guys are about to see that, but we're gonna roll on with the giveaways. I'm giving away a set of Dexter knives. I've been with Dexter for about a year now. Great knives, all made in the USA, and you guys can save 20% on all Dexter products if you use my code Landshark. So now, I'm doing three separate giveaways. One on YouTube, one on Facebook, one on Instagram. To enter the YouTube giveaway, all you guys have to do, go in the comment section below and comment Landshark, code Landshark, save 20%. That's it, that's your entry for the giveaway. Secondly, on Facebook, follow me on Facebook, like the Facebook page, and there'll be a post there with entry rules. Same thing for Instagram, at Landshark Outdoors. Three chances to win, I'm giving away an eight inch Tiger Edge, a seven or eight inch narrow fillet knife, and an eight inch wide fillet knife. So you guys will be completely set. Now let's roll on with the video. So I'm out here with Joey Antonelli, right over there. I'll feature him a little bit later, and it is going off the pompano. Joey's been firing out rods, he already has four keepers. I had to rig up, I left all my rigs in the truck. So let's go fire these rods out. Now let's get the next rod out. Right, and we're pompano fishing. We got a good six rod spread so far. All right, Joey's rod is on. Hey, this rod's slack right here. Okay, I'll check that one. All right. Oh, look at that. He's hooked in the uh, hooked in the throat. Wow. All right, so this is what we do. We'll leave them on the sand, then you rinse them off before you put them in the cooler. <laughs> Rod almost went in the water. I hope I got that one on video. Oh. Wow, this thing, oh. bro, this thing almost took the rod in. Keeper. Hey, that's on the fish bite sand flea combo right there. Blanche fleas too, right? Yeah. Almost just lost the rod, didn't I? Oh, it was pretty close. Yeah, this was on the uh, half bait, uh, fish bites, half sand flea. There we go. So the reason we have so many rods is I just got hit, Joey just got hit, and what'll happen is you'll have multiple waves of fish come through. Could be 30 fish, could be 15, but you want to have as many rods out as possible because they're the type of, it's the type of fishery where if you get hit, It'll be on there for like five minutes, just dangling on the line and you reel one in, get the other in. And you're meat fishing, so you're trying to put as many pompano on the beach as possible. Got them on, got them on. All right, guys, you get the head cam. Got them on. There's like never a dull moment. We're either rigging up or reeling in fish or casting. It's pretty consistent action. And like you guys just saw Joey do, we're slinging it out as far as we can. There's a sandbar right there, so we're just on the inside of that sandbar. This is interesting, Joey fishes three hooks, whereas I only fish two. I don't think they're that picky. 
I don't either. It's a glorified chicken rig. I think it's more of a buoyancy thing. I don't think the color of the rig matters or anything. Oh, don't sell that to a pompano guy. They'll chew your head off. I think it's getting that flea in the right spot. They go for a little bath before they go in the cooler because they're... We don't want to put all that sand in the cooler, so... Get a five gallon bucket, fill it up with some nice fresh beach water, and you're good to go. Joey just got hit down there. Oh, Joey, this rod. There we go, they're coming through, they're coming through. They're coming through from the north. Which is real fast. Yeah, we were just talking about how it was kind of dead for like 10 minutes or so. Coming in with the waves. All right, quickly unhook him and we gotta get baits back out. And then, oh, Joey, Joey, last rod right there. Down there. Um, and this one. Oh shoot, I gotta go. So a lot of times what I think will happen is if Joey's down there, he's, he's all his rods are set up to the north. So if these fish are running from north to south, it's pretty much like a, they get hit like dominoes in a row, you know what I mean? All the way from north to south. And my lonely rods don't get any action down there. And the best part about today, best part about today is we don't have to measure a single fish. All of them look to be keeper. Oh shoot, this rod. Ah! This rod's about to go in. Oh yeah, he's on there. See? Just like that, just like that we banged out four pumping and that's why you gotta have all these rods out. Well, we just get four or five four in a row. Fast. That was insane. And we were just saying, it got really slow for a little bit, but that's why you gotta have all these rods out because you never know when that floor is gonna come through. So what I've been doing is, this is a little precaution. I do a little bit of fish bite along with my sand flea if they miss the sand flea, then you still have a little shot to get them with this guy right here. So the, my superstition with the pompano fishing, the further you stand away, the faster your rods get hit. It's always the last one or the one that you're nowhere near. Yeah, it just gets whacked. Yeah. Sounds about right. We got five of them there somehow. Oh no! <laughs> I gotta put the sand fleas in my pocket. This one too? Yeah, you get that one, I'll get this one. Chewing! Uh, All right, Mr. Pompano. What did you do here? What did you do? You made a big mess. Get my rods out. We're moving today. You gotta be fast on the beach. So there's our half fish bite, half sand flea. Epic pompano chew. Oh yeah. Vic, is this the best pompano bite you've been on? Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely the best one. Can't keep rods in the water with two guys. No, you really need a third person right now. Be a third person just to bait them up. Good. Pump it up. Chewing. Oh yeah. Nice. Joey got a double. I literally just casted this rod out. Not even 15 seconds has gone by. Turned the GoPro off, turned it on, and we're on. Hello, Mr. Pompano. If you guys aren't subscribed to Joe Antonelli yet, I don't know what you're doing because this guy absolutely slays fish. You guys have seen me fish with him in the past. If you guys are into, he does everything. I was gonna say intro stuff. He goes offshore, spear fishing, diving, everything. Tarpon, snook, redfish, spear fishing, cobia, hogfish, Bahamas trips, all that. Surf fishing, whatever. And he's like the Sebastian guru. He's seriously. Oh, oh I got him! Chew! So yeah, you can tell he knows what he's doing. So go ahead, subscribe to him. Link below, also on the screen right here, Joey Antonelli. And what we were gonna do is 
tell you about these sand fleas. Got him on! And you don't got a camera, man. You got to improvise. You got to put your hat on your sand spike. Brookie didn't make it out with me on this trip because she's got lots of videos to edit, but wish you were here, babe. Oh, that's a good one. Keeper. There we the last go. Two we caught, well, Joey and I caught two right before this, and they were undersized. I love it when you catch them when you don't have to measure them. Yeah, you know that's I mean? a solid one. Nice pound and a half of fish. So this fish, this is like a $15 fish, full market value at a grocery store. Just picture this, you're pulling up $15 bills out of the surf. Because what, you guys can sell them for $7? It just depends, depends on the market, but yeah. On a low price, say five, high price seven. Look at that. In the bucket we go. Pretty hard. He looks good. Yeah, right in that shallow water. There we go. So you guys saw the sand fleas were used for bait. They're like pompano gold, but a lot of times when it gets cold, it's hard to find these things. And even at bait shops, you struggle to find the live ones. So we keep them alive, and whether you buy them or you catch them, we got a bucket with a bunch of holes in it, and you just got to rinse them twice a day. Like rinse them in the morning, rinse them in the evening. And if you don't live by the water, just bring home a five gallon bucket of water to rinse them and keep them cool and they'll live for four or five days. These are like three days old already. But you don't keep them in water at all times or no, they'll drown, right? you definitely do not keep them in water at all times. Just like that. And it, what kills them a lot of times is the ammonia in their, uh, oh, wet. wet jeans and boots. Yeah. Got one on the little rod. Oh, your other rod's going off. Ah! You might want to go grab that. Told you guys, this is crazy out here. Oh, that fish is on there. Check it out, I got a pump, a little pompano in the sur on the surf rod, the little rod. And we still got a pompano on here, I think. That guy's small. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's one you don't need to measure. So check it out. There's a difference between a keeper and a non-keeper. Much bigger. This is the one I got on the little rod. I'm gonna let this guy go. No! I just got soaked. Dang. Yep. Dense. Probably close to two pounds. I was gonna go back to the inlet, but you know what? I'm at Joey's private beach. I'm not gonna go and deal with the crowds. There's plenty of pompano here. The pompano actually started biting again. Oh, nice! Joey just got two, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna help him load up because he's commercial, so he can keep as many, well, he can keep 250 a day. I'll dabble into that later. But um, we're gonna try to continue with Pompano. There you go. I'm staying on this side so I can see the other rods. Dude, that's that's a sprint. These things get your heart pumping, don't they? Yeah, you're running suicides for them. Come on. Oh, there he is. In the surf. We'll go spot him in case he comes off. Look at that on the fish bite flea combo. Got him on. Yeah, man, that fish bites, sand flea combo really does work. Such a pretty fish. This one's got a real yellow tail, you see that? The river ones get like yellow all here. Yeah, too. the yellow bellies. And then also when you put them on ice, they turn a lot more yellow, don't they? Yeah. There's another keeper. Hey, that's probably one of the bigger fish all day. So Joey and I just got two back-to-back -back really good sized pompano. Check out that thing. Solid one, easy two, two to three pounder. And then Joey got that one, probably two to three pounder as well. Studs. All right guys, you know what time it is. Land shark thumbnail time. Anything to get that juicy thumbnail. So, how many we in today with Joey? 
think right around 40, 37, 38, 40, something like that. We did we good. 40. Definitely my best day of pompano fishing ever. Pretty sick. This guy keeps trying to wiggle back in. Stay. Before we move on, as promised, I wanted to touch up on the rig that I use that was so successful in putting all those pompano on the beach because I love helping you guys and spreading the knowledge and that's what YouTube's all about. So, I really want to stress that I think a lot of people overthink pompano fishing and I'm not an expert, I'm not a commercial guy, but Joey and I talked about it. He does a ton of pompano fishing and does very well as you guys see. They're almost like a glorified jack. Now, don't take offense to that any pompano guys, but they're literally eating a chicken rig in the surf with what you guys are about to see. So starting with the rod and reel. So you're gonna want a really long rod. I don't go smaller than 11 foot. This is a Tsunami, I'm gonna have it linked below. Tsunami actually has a lot of good stuff at an affordable price, especially for pompano fishing from the surf. So 11, 12 foot, 13 foot rod, whatever you're comfortable with. Make sure it's able to slug four ounce, five ounce weights on it. And then a reel. I have this with a Tsunami Shield 6000 30 pound braid. The light braid really helps in launching it out there because there are times where you really want to get as far as possible because the pompano are running really deep, not shallow. So 30 to 40 pound braid is what I recommend. And okay, so let's talk about the rig now. You guys may have seen pompano rigs for sale in stores and if you guys have a favorite rig, go ahead buy it but I'm gonna tell you it is so incredibly easy to make your own and you guys can save a ton of money so what you do is you start with a light swivel hundred pounds or less and then your rig should be anywhere from three to four feet long I like to fish two hooks Joey fishes three but I think he only caught two doubles the entire or one double the entire time we were there so I feel like anything more than two hooks is a waste what you do is you cut a longer piece of leader than you need and then you make dropper loops. Now I'm not going to teach you how to make dropper loops. You guys can YouTube it. It's very easy. But this is the dropper loop. Next part of our rig are these funky looking pillow like things. These are floats. They're sold in a variety of colors. Green, chartreuse, yellow, pink, white, red. All sorts of different colors. And I've done a video on this in the past. Commercial pompano fishermen say that this is a huge role in how they get bites. Because number one... The purpose of the float is to keep your bait, your sand flea, your fish bite off of the sand, off of the bottom, because that's where the crabs are, catfish. You want to keep it suspended. Secondly, it's supposed to act like an indicator. So depending on the color of the wa water, whether it's green, turquoise, really clear, it's supposed to create contrast. And that's where the theory behind the color comes in. Frankly, me and Joey were talking about it. I think the number one thing in determining whether you're going to catch pompano is if they're there. We had every single color you guys could imagine, and we had a seven rod spread. We never noticed that one rod got hit more than other, others. We never noticed that one color got hit more than others. It could have just been a really good day, but in all the times I've gone pompano fishing, I have never noticed a color to make a huge difference. The most important thing, I think, is the fact that it's floating, it's suspended off of the bottom, and that's why I got a variety of floats. Colors in the fishing world are almost always to attract the fishermen and not the fish. That's like with lures, because most fish are colorblind. On top of the float, you have a hook. So this is my favorite hook for pompano. This is a Mustad Demon Perfect Circle Hook. It's not 2X strong, 3X strong. It's a fine wire hook, and that's important for two reasons. You're able to penetrate the mouth of the pompano very easily because it's a thin gauge wire hook. And secondly, when you're hooking baits like sand fleas or shrimp or clam, you don't want a thick gauge wire hook because it's going to make your bait more prone to rip, especially something like a sand flea. That thin gauge wire really helps. You almost never gut hook them with these, so if you're catching undersized pompano, it's good for the species. The best hook for pompano. And like I said, all of this stuff will be linked below. So that's what we got. My rig is probably right around three feet long. I have my float, I have my hooks, and at the very end, I like to put a snap swivel. And what I'll do is I like to fish these Sputnik style weights. And the way these work is you'll cast them out, and as you reel it in to get tight, 
these prongs will dig into the sand. As a pompano hits it, or as you're reeling it in, what they'll do is they can disengage like that, so now you're able to drag it through the water more freely rather than it getting stuck in the sand. These are crucial. On days where there's a lot of swell or a lot of surf, I highly recommend these. Joey and I were fishing pyramid sinkers and there were periods in the day where we really needed these because we were dragging like crazy, but I didn't have them on me. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about was bait. So we were fishing a combination of dead sand fleas, blanched, as well as live sand fleas. The sand fleas were really getting hit, but I also got hit on these things called fish bites. So I usually tip my hook with half fish bite, half bait if I have it. So I'll do half fish bite, half sand flea, just because if the pompano comes and he eats the sand flea and loses it, you still have a little, bait, a little bit of bait on here. And I'll tell you what, most of the time I go pompano fishing, I only have fish bites on and they work incredibly well. So if there are times where you don't know if you're gonna be able to have bait, I really recommend these. They're relatively cheap because you can catch two, three, four, five fish on one fish bite. As you guys see, there's this crazy mesh that gets stuck on your hook, and that is what's inside the actual fish bite. And no, I'm not sponsored by fish bites, but they really do make a great product. It looks like one of those gimmicky fishing things that you would see on a commercial, but they really work. And a lot of the commercial guys swear by them, and they'll only fish this instead of the regular bait. So if I could say one thing you guys just ingrained it in your head is to not overthink it go out there make sure you're you're casting far enough make sure you're constantly rebaiting your hooks don't leave your rod out there for an hour check it every 10 to 15 minutes and just get out there that's it this is an incredibly easy fishery to do with your friends and family teach little kids how to go to the surf and reel in pompano and they taste great so see you guys in the kitchen and we'll whip this pompano up so tonight's catching hook isn't going to be some extravagant thing. We're doing it really simple because Brooke and I have literally eaten fish five days in a row. So as much as we love fish, we're getting kind of tired of having the same thing over and over. So tonight is all about the pompano. Check out those beautiful fillets. And one thing you guys always hear me preach is when you let fish sit in the fridge for too long, you got to cut out the bloodline. That's why you guys see these pompano aren't in their normal fillets, but I cut the bloodline completely out. Because bloodline's fresh, fine. Bloodline's a few days later, no bueno. So tonight we're making something that you probably are gonna, your head's probably gonna spin 360 degrees. We're making fish quesadillas, which is not traditional, but I know it's gonna be really good. So, really lightly season with the garlic powder, salt, and Brooke made a good point. She has made fish quesadillas before. And what were they? Great, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think I was there that night. Non stick pan with some canola oil, medium high heat. And I didn't really talk a lot about this during the actual fishing part of the video, but in case you guys were wondering, so we kept way more than a recreational limit. A recreational limit in Florida is six pompano per person per day. But Joey has what's called a restricted species or, or an RS. So he's able to sell up to 250 pompano per day. And that's why you guys saw 40 on the beach at one time. Normally, no, that is highly illegal. You can't do that. But since he has that, that's why, that's why he did what he did. Okay, so fish didn't take long at all. Pompano plays are relatively thin. About two to three minutes on each side. I'm gonna turn my heat to medium. I'm just gonna wipe some of this oil off. Leave some on so our quesadillas get crispy, but I don't want them drowning in it. Now the fun part. So, Mexican four cheese blend. And we only have these little taco shells from our taco night over the weekend. So we're gonna do a little bit of that. And our fish. We'll do some fish. And then this, I didn't show you guys on camera, but this is what I made earlier. Caramelized onions are like my little secret when it comes to making quesadillas. See that brown juice? I um, deglaze the pan with some chicken stock. Makes it super delicious. So we put some onion on there. It really makes the quesadillas. 
and then we put some cheese on top and there we go now right back onto the non-stick pan have your quesadilla, you have your salsa, and some guac. It's a fishadillo. This is probably the best thing to give little kids who aren't sure about eating fish, or someone in your family who's not sure about eating fish. True. Fish. You can. Do you like it? It's very good. Honestly, you can't even tell that you're like eating fish at all. Whoa. Talk well, about so a loaded quesadilla, Emily. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's a professional quesadilla eater. Mm -hmm. I can tell. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Can you pass me the block? That's real good. Good, Christine? I haven't had a bite yet. What? She's preparing. No, Brooke's right though. Like, it doesn't, it's not overly fishy. It's awesome. So if you're not a big fish person, but you want to branch out. Well said. Way to go. <laughs> Good? Mm -hmm. There we go. Wow. Well. All right, three ladies approved. This is uh, Brooke's two really good friends, by the way. This is Emily. Hello. And Christine. Hi. And you guys, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you've seen both of them in videos before. Sushi nights and stuff, Brooke's really good friends. And um, so I'm gonna put the camera away. We're gonna have a nice little meal together. Girls are gonna have a pool day out back. I'm gonna get this video up for you guys. And if you guys like these videos, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in that next video.